It's no secret right now that I believe that the Claude 3 family of models are the best models in the industry at the moment, particularly when it comes to writing and creating natural sounding text. But it obviously doesn't get nearly the mainstream attention that ChatGPT does, even though I consider it to be wildly superior to the GPT 3.5 and 4 models. And because it doesn't get the attention it deserves, there are a number of tips and cool techniques that you can check out that nobody is really talking about. So in this video, I'm going to give you five tips that you probably didn't know about Claude and Claude 3. Let's get into it. The first is that you don't have to use Claude Pro. I happen to have a subscription to Claude Pro, which is $20 a month, but there are other ways of accessing all of the Claude models. For instance, as of this recording, those in Canada are not capable of accessing Claude through Claude Pro, and there are many other countries as well in a similar situation, or you might just not want to pay Claude Pro, right? So there are a couple of alternatives for you. The first is Po.com. Now this one costs the same as Claude Pro, but it gives you access to all of the different models here. As you can see, we have Claude 3 Sonic, Claude 3 Haiku, Claude 3 Opus. It also has access to GPT-4, Gemini Pro, and a number of other models, including Mr. Large, Mr. Medium, Llama, basically anything that you would get in any of the other models. And you can actually have access to all of those things here for 20 bucks a month, which actually makes Poe a really good alternative, not just to Claude Pro, but to all of the different models out there. I do find it to be slightly limited. I don't know if there's a system prompt or something going on with Poe, but sometimes I'm not able to get quite the same output with Poe that I can get through Claude Pro directly. But if you're only using it for ideation, brainstorming, for just playing around, doing it in Poe is going to be a much better option than doing it directly in Claude Pro, in ChatGPT, or any of the other models. It's kind of a good all-in-one solution that I do recommend. I'm not affiliated with Poe or anything like that, I just think that they're a great service. I personally don't have it, but that's because as an influencer in this space, I have all of the other tools, so I don't really need Poe on top of that. Another way to access the Claude models is through a service called OpenRouter, OpenRouter.ai, and this tool works a little differently differently. It does allow you access to pretty much all models out there. You come here to model, scroll down, and you'll be able to find all of the Claude models here, including Claude 3, Haiku, Sonnet, and Opus. Open Router works a little differently in the sense that you pay as you go. So you're paying by the token rather than a flat fee every month, which depending on some people could be more or less than the 20 bucks that you use in Claude Pro or Poe or any of these other services. If you're only dabbling here and there with AI and not using it aggressively, then Open Router might be good for you. Additionally, if you're using a tool like Novel Crafter, which as of this recording is my top recommendation recommendation for actually using AI to write books, whether that's fiction or nonfiction, then you can come into Novel Crafter and connect your open router account to Novel Crafter, at which point Novel Crafter is able to pull in the models into it as well and be used in all of the different ways that Novel Crafter can use them. So basically there are a lot of different options for you if you're not going to be using Claude Pro directly. All right, number two, there is actually a self-moderated version of Claude. Going back to Open Router, which I've already mentioned, if you go here to the models and scroll all the way down to look at the Claude models, you'll notice a couple of interesting things. First, we have the Claude 3 Opus, Sonnet, and Haiku models right here, but below them, you'll see something called Opus, Sonnet, and Haiku with this little self-moderated tag. Now, what is this, you might ask? This is something, it is very temporary right now. It may go away, we don't know. This is kind of in beta, but this is something that has been worked out in an agreement between the folks at Open Router and the folks at Anthropic, who make Claude, to create this self-moderated version of their models. Now, what this means is, ordinarily speaking, when you type a prompt in, it will go through, we'll just call it like a curtain, a filter, that Anthropic has sort of put together to catch things that they consider to be problematic or what have you. It's essentially a barrier, a censorship to weed out all of the, the more problematic issues. The problem is there are many legitimate reasons why you might want to address some of those more problematic issues. The obvious one for folks that watch this channel is if you're writing fiction. If you want to graphically depict a scene that involves a lot of violence or anything like that, that's going to be something that Claude really has a problem with. And that's due to this sort of filter put simply 
simply, of course, that Anthropic has up. Well, with the self-moderated versions, the way those work is the prompt does not go through that filter, instead goes to Claude directly, and the folks at Anthropic have made it so that Claude can judge for itself whether it's okay to use that prompt or to moderate it. Now, it's still somewhat censored, but from what I've experienced and talking to other people that have been using these self-moderated models pretty heavily, you run into far less censorship with these models than you would otherwise. And that seems to be because the Claude models are able to understand a more nuanced usage of the material and the prompts that it's given. So it understands the context behind writing a novel a little bit better so it can actually go ahead and write it. And this I think is one of the best kept secrets about Claude right now. And it's one of the best ways to write with Claude is to actually use one of these three self-moderated models. And I tend to use them in Novel Crafter. That's my favorite way to use them. And they work like a charm and they are only accessible at the moment, at least as far as I'm aware, through Open Router and any service that utilizes Open Router like Novel Crafter. Now, if you're getting value out of this content and you're enjoying the things that I'm saying, I actually have all of my prompts, pretty much everything that I've put together so far in one giant prompt library that you can go ahead and access absolutely for free. Additionally, you will get a free course about my AI fundamentals, basically all of the important foundational elements that I recommend when actually working with AI. And while it's not quite ready yet, although who knows, it might be by the time this actually goes out, I am working on a perfect 40 chapter outline that will tell you exactly the kind of things that you should write in each chapter and it works fantastically as a prompt. All of that will be available for free when you sign up for my email list, the link is down below. All right, speaking of prompt libraries, in number three, we learned that Anthropic has its own prompt library that you can actually check out. It's got a whole lot of different prompts and different things that you can try out. Let's go ahead and look at some of these. Uh, for instance, we have the time travel consultant. That sounds very interesting. So it gives you a sample prompt and an example output and even shows you what the API request uh, would be looking for. Now you could use this inside of Claude's API or you could just go ahead and copy this first little bit and we'll paste it here in Claude Opus. And instead of saying, let's say I have a time machine and I travel back to the year 1900, while there I accidentally prevent the invention of the airplane by the Wright brothers, what would the potential implications of this action? So I like this. Let's go ahead and change the situation though. Uh, let's say back to the year 500 AD. And I'm gonna change this instead of like changing the past, we'll say, while there, uh, and, and actually let's say in England, while there, what would I be likely to encounter? I know I've changed the prompt quite a bit there, but this first part of the prompt remains the same. You are an AI assistant with expertise in physics, philosophy, and science fiction. Your task is to help users explore and understand the implications of a hypothetical time travel scenario provide detailed insights on the potential consequences, paradoxes, and ethical considerations involved in each specific scenario while maintaining a friendly and engaging conversation. So let's go ahead and run it with that. It's given us a list of things here. So we have uh, England was divided into several Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Uh, Christianity was spreading. Social hierarchy was very important with kings, nobles, warriors, freemen, and slaves. Uh, we had daily life, okay, most people lived in small rural communities. Homes were simple wooden structures with thatched roofs. And this can be a really great starting point if you write historical fiction or historical fantasy or anything like that. And this is just one of the many prompts that they give you examples of here in Claude's prompt library. Another good one here we could look at is cite your sources, where you can basically say, you are an expert research assistant. Here is the document you will answer questions about. First, find the quotes from the document that are most relevant to answering the question and then print them in numbered order. Quotes should be relatively short. If there are no relevant quotes, write no relevant quotes instead. And this really gives you a good idea of what Anthropics themselves recommend as good prompts. And as you get a better understanding of their prompt engineering, you will be able to construct better prompts as well. Which actually brings us to number four, and that is that Anthropic has a really good prompt engineering guide. One of the best I've seen, actually. It starts with the basics, you know, like what is prompt engineering? We have the prompt development life cycle, and then they give you a couple of prompt engineering techniques many of which we have talked about before here on the channel, like being clear and direct, 
being specific, right, about what you want, using examples and frameworks. Uh, and then this one is interesting that they put this here, use XML tags. And we have seen this to actually be the case with a lot of the prompts. And if you look at the background of what tools like Novel Crafter do, they are actually constructing their prompts in a way that uses XML tags like you see here. XML tags look something like this. You'll see it in XML, you'll see it in HTML, where they have an open and closing bracket or opening and closing arrows. And then the second tag here will have the little forward slash in front of it. And then you can change whatever you want that tag to be. And they give you a whole bunch of advice on how to use this. For instance, it says there's no canonical best set of XML tag names that Claude performs particularly well with. For example, a tag of doc works just as well as a tag of document. The only time you need very specific XML tag names is in the case of function calling. Uh, so if you're actually writing code and stuff like that. A lot of really valuable information here, and I'll probably dive deeper into some of these in a future video, but definitely go check these out. Again, links to all of this stuff will be down below. All right, now for the fifth and final tip, you can actually train the Claude models to write a little bit more like you. One of the things that we found in testing this extensively, and I say we, I mean myself and members of my community, is that Claude 3 is much more responsive to prompt than other models in the past have been. For instance, if you were trying to prompt GPT-4, you could put lots and lots of style information and even sample chapters of your work and do a little bit of something. It usually doesn't affect the quality of the output that much. In general, it's still gonna have a lot of those chat GPT-isms, the little overused words, over-the-top flowery, melodramatic prose. And while some of the Claude models, particularly Claude Opus for some reason, if you don't use any sort of stylistic prompting, it can actually revert to a little bit of that over the topness from what we've seen so far to the point where I've had a few people come to me and say it's actually gotten worse. But that is actually not the case. So far from all of our testing, we have found that if you include things like a sample chapter, the resulting output is a lot more like the actual style of your writing than what you could get out of ChatGPT, for instance. It's also much more responsive to actual actual style prompting and actually staying with the styles that you give it. So for instance, if you wanted to do this in Novel Crafter, this is what it would look like. First, you would want to make sure that you come here to this snippet section and create a snippet. You can call it whatever you want. I just call it simply sample. And I have placed an entire chapter of my novel here inside of this snippet. The next thing you want to do is go here to prompts. And I just went here to general purpose and then you clone this general purpose prompt. Once you're inside of the cloned version of the general purpose prompt, come here to instructions and you can actually read the prompt as it is generated inside of Novel Crafter. And what you'll want to do is add a line. Now you can add this pretty much anywhere, but I added it right here at the same place where you'd get the words before. In fact, actually, let's place that just before that. And I say write in a style similar to this sample chapter. And then I add in this little code snippet to make sure that it is reading that sample chapter that I placed in. And so you have an open bracket snippets.get, then an open parenthesis, and then in quotes, you put the name of your sample chapter snippet that you created earlier, close it with both a closed parenthesis and a closed bracket. And that's how you get it to access that sample chapter inside of the prompt. Now you could also change how much context it has. So if you really want it to read a lot of the previous work, you could add maybe like 5,000 here to read the previous 5,000 words. I'm just gonna leave it at 2,000 for now, but that could also help your prompt as well. And now if you come here and select your general purpose copy, in this case, you might wanna rename it, and then select your Claude 3 Opus Sonnet or Haiku, I'm just gonna select uh, well, let's go ahead and select Opus just to test this out. Uh, we got Mina stepped out of the carriage, her senses immediately assaulted by the bustle of the busy London street. She glanced up at the towering stone building before them, its gothic spires reaching into the night sky. Despite the late hour, the strand teemed with activity, carriages rattling by, gentlemen in top hats strolling along the side rock. Ladies in colorful, colorful gowns heading to some evening soiree. The sheer number of people made Mina's skin prickle with unease. She was used to the quiet solitude of her nightly hunts, not this overwhelming press of humanity. Every sound seemed magnified, every scent more pungent. She could hear the blood thrumming and 
dozens of veins. She could almost taste it on the back of her tongue, dot, dot, dot. And this is very much in, like in my style. Still a little bit of that sort of AI flair, easily edited out. And this is much more like I would want it to actually write. I'm just curious to, let's try this with Claude 3 Sonnet and see how it does. Not that bad, pretty similar, maybe slightly less natural, but overall this prose sounds very similar to what we just got. So I'm pretty happy with this. And now just to complete the set, let's actually check out what it does with Claude 3 Haiku. And actually it's not that bad either. The results that all three of them gave me are actually surprisingly close to each other. And that's probably because of the quality of the prompt that we're giving it. Though I would say there are marginal improvements based on the more expensive models that you use. So if you wanna go ahead and try Novel Crafter to give this prompting method a try, go ahead. My link is down below. It is an affiliate link, but of course I only share the affiliate links that I actively use or strongly recommend. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can just take a sample chapter of your book, paste it in to Claude Pro and include it as part of your prompt in say maybe a super prompt type format. And if you want to know more about Claude 3 and the Claude 3 family of models, I've done a whole comparison video showing all three models put up against each other. You can check that video out here, which I'll link to, and I'll see you in the next video.